so the arrangement I would imagine is, well, a spherical mirror. <laughs> so I have a reflecting, curved reflecting surface, and it's curved in such a way I can imagine that um, it, all these points are equidistant from a particular point here. And this uh, distance will be my radius of that spherical mirror. Good. Does, it, does it look roughly right? So when we are talking about focal length, um, I want to make the situation as simple as possible. So the way I would figure out this focal length is I would try to come up with a situation that's similar to this, where I have parallel rays coming in. They will go through the mirror using this law of reflection. And I'll find where those rays come together. And that's going to be my focal point or focus. Now, I, there's a bunch that I'm not really proving here with a textbook. I'm just uh, going through an exercise that's uh, sort of shorthand for memorizing the formula that I'll drive at the at very end. So as you look at here, I'm going to try to draw two rays. Um, one of them will be super simple. One of the rays, uh, so this point, let's call that vertex, to the farthest point on the mirror. Um, so it would be... On this mirror, this point here would be the vertex. So I can imagine a ray that's coming in, going through the center of the radius of curvature, and hits this vertex right. How would this ray reflect? Straight back, right? Because it's at 90 degrees here. So it comes, and it'll go straight back. All right, that's a ray. So it goes straight back. This uh, doubled up path is what it's tracing. All right. I just want it as a reference point. The other ray I want to draw is essentially the same ray, but translated upward so that it's parallel. So let's uh, trace uh, how that ray goes. I will mark up some angles and try to figure out the distance for focal length. So this is the parallel ray that's coming in. Um, parallel to the original one. So it's going to strike the mirror here. Now, this is not incident at 90 degrees. You can see it a little bit better if I draw my auxiliary figure. I can draw the radius from here to that point. So this radius, this is supposed to be at 90 degrees. So this ray, it's not incident at 9, or it's not incident at 0 degrees. It's incident at this small angle theta 1. Yeah. Well, I guess it doesn't have to be small. Eventually, I will want to say it's small. Um, all right, so law of reflection. So it goes through the reflection. The angle that it's outgoing is the same angle it came in. Uh, I don't think I drew. Um, by the way, my drawings are not really to scale, so. I'm just going to prove things geometrically. <laughs> so, because um, I, I don't think this looks, it looks about 30, 40% off. But uh, let me redraw it. I think of, I drew my lines curved. Let me draw it. Maybe that's better. I don't know. Whatever. I'm, I'm not going to measure things. I'm going to just prove things geometrically. So, this is what I have. And where these two rays cross, this point. This is my focus. This is my focal point. And on this diagram, what would be my focal length is the distance. So I guess you can define it any way. The way that's traditionally defined is the distance from the focus to the vertex. That is what we define as the focal length. We usually use the letter F to indicate focal length. So what I want to do now in the next five minutes or less is go through the geometrical exercise to figure out a formula for this f in terms of other parameters. That hopefully is something simple. Everyone good on what the goal is? OK, uh, so you know, I stare at this for a bit. I see if I can figure out something. Mm. And I remember I did this before class to make sure I know what to do. <laughs> That'll be the thing with the geometry. Sometimes you are not quite sure 
what to do. Um, so that's where it's helpful to just to start labeling things. Like, I would like to know this angle, because then I feel like I can find out something about this whole triangle. Um, can I say that this angle is equal to that angle? I mean, it kind of looks it, but I don't have anything on the board right now that proves that these two angles are the same, right? OK, so I can't do it yet. So you stare it for a little longer. So when you're using um, geometry, it'll be useful to know some special features. For example, I know that these are 90 degrees. I don't think that's going to help. Um, I know that these two lines are parallel. I, by choice, they are parallel, right? And this is, a, I don't know the geometry term for it, but it's some kind of line that goes across both parallel lines. So I have this angle here, which ought to be equal to this angle. Okay. Oh, so this angle is 2 theta 1. So this ought to be 2 theta 1. Do I now know this angle? Yeah, it's theta 1, right? Somewhere in your background, the knowledge about geometry says that when you have this triangle and this extension here, this angle here is the sum of the other two internal angles. Right? Yeah. All right, that's promising. So, oh, so this is an isosceles triangle, right? I have, so this side, uh, let me draw the isos, sorry. So this is the isosceles triangle. This side is equal to that side. Um, and I happen to know this bottom side. This is R, because it's a radius. So, so that means I ought to be able to figure this out. Um, <laughs> the way you would do it is you, you would draw the perpendicular line here, so that you have this right triangle. This portion is R over 2. So this is the adjacent or the adjacent over the hypotenuse, that's cosine. So if you are trying to get an expression for this hypotenuse, this would be adjacent over cosine of the angle. So um, this distance is, uh, I don't know what to call it. Let's just call it D. D is equal to adjacent over the cosine of theta 1. Everyone OK with that? OK, I think I have everything I need. The focal length is the, this entire distance, radius r, minus this. That's the focal length. Right. So we could say um, focal length f is equal to r minus r over 2 over cosine of theta 1. Now, as you look at this answer, it's very unsatisfactory. What's unsatisfactory? Theta 1. Yeah, theta 1. So for 1, that makes it complicated. 2, it makes the focal point a function of the angle, which means if this ray is coming in at different height, they will not all converge at this point. Because if you imagine a ray that's up much higher, then theta 1 will be larger. And, um, and you know, so it will, I guess, so cosine of theta 1 will be smaller. So this will be larger. So this will be smaller. So that means the ray that's coming off of, like, you know, from way bottom here, when it reflects here, it won't come to focus here. It will come to focus somewhere other elsewhere. So this uh, theta 1 is uh, highly unsatisfactory. So what we are going to do is we are going to make an approximation. And the approximation that we are going to make is, um, you've heard this before. It's not new approximation. The approximation we are going to make is a small angle approximation. So under, meaning theta 1 is much less than 1 radian. Under small angle approximation, anybody remember what cosine of, the, uh, and cosine of small angle is approximately equal to? 1? 
Yes, yeah, one. I mean, if you want to make it more precise, it's one minus theta squared over two, but we're not doing that yet. So we say cosine theta is approximately equal to one, which means this is r minus r over two. So under small angle approximation, cosine of theta one is approximately one. So the focal length is approximately r over two. This is a much more satisfying answer. It's a constant value. What that means is that uh, for the light rays that are close enough to the, the sort of the optical axis, the, this line here, um, it's close enough so that this angle will be theta one will be small. And small means actually quite large, like up to 30 degrees is actually considered small for small angle approximation. So for those light rays, sometimes we call them, um, uh, if we want to have a phrase to search in, in the future, uh, this is also a condition we call paraxial. Paraxial uh, rays or paraxial approximation, whatever. It means close to the axis. For the light rays close to the axis, the, um, this approximation is good enough. So the focal length is approximately r over two. So this is the formula. That's the formula I want you to drive. Hopefully make it easier for you to memorize and um, sort of leave it off there.